Hi everyone. In this video, I'll go through and introduce bash scripting within Google Colab. Before we actually get into scripting, I'll go through what shell commands are and what bash is. A shell is an interface that executes commands. The shell allows the user to communicate via commands with the kernel, a program at the core of a computer's operating system. With shell, it's possible to invoke complicated programs like climate modeling software or simple commands that create an empty directory with only one line of code. A shell is a command line interpreter and is one form of navigating an operating system. The other form is through a graphical user interface, or GUI, which allows a user to navigate using icons, menus, and windows. And one example of a GUI we can actually see on the screen right now is my cursor, which allows me to navigate through a program. Bash itself is a command language interpreter. It is widely used on various operating systems and is a default command line interpreter on most GNU and or Linux systems. The name is an acronym for the born again shell. And besides Bash, there are many other command language interpreters, such as C shell, CH shell, Z shell, corn shell, and even Windows PowerShell. The reason that we're working with Bash and not any of the other langu language interpreters is because Bash is used within IPython and then by default Google Colab uses Bash as well. Bash is accessed using the exclamation point or percentage sign characters. Exclamation point is used for temporary subshell commands while the percentage sign is used for more enduring commands. And we'll see examples of this as we start executing commands within Bash. Moving on to our first command, we'll go through manual, man or manual. And this is an interface to the system reference manuals. I like to think of it as the help function for Bash. The way we initiate it was, is with an exclamation point, man, and we can get the manual for echo, the next command line that we'll work with. And what we get here is a few different things. We get the name of it, the description of it, options, operands that can be used with this command, and many other, and many other important points that are useful. And as with the help function in Python, I highly recommend incorporating this into your vocabulary vocabulary as you start working with Bash for the first time. Moving on, we have echo. And echo is a command that outputs the strings that are passed to it as arguments. I like to think of echo as the print function for Bash. Let's type our first echo command, and we'll just do hello world. And we see here it's simply printed out as hello world, like we would expect with print hello world with Python. And echo is also useful if we want to get the command language that we're working with. The way I do this is I type in echo, I'm going to put a dollar sign, and type in shell. And this tells me that I'm working with Bash. This is important to know because if you're working for a new computer for the first time, you may not be working with Bash, but you may be working with another command language, such as C shell. Moving on, we have PWD, or Print Work Directory. And this returns the current working directory. The default directory for Google Colab is the content folder. Let's check this out right now. The way I do this is I put an exclamation point, PWD, shift enter to run, and that will get me the current folder I'm working in. And this is the folder here, the content folder. And we'll navigate through a few different things and we'll get to see the different folders we work with. CD, or change directory, is used to change the working directory. The path name is input after CD. 
And what we'll do is Google Colab gives us this sample data folder. And what I'm going to do is this is where I use the percentage sign because if I try to do CD and I'm going to give the path, I can take a look at the current working directory again and it's still content. I can't use the exclamation point. I'll have to use the percentage sign. I'm going to run this again. And now we've moved into the content sample data fil folder. Now we're, that we're in this sample data folder, we want to see the content that's in here. What we could do is we can put the exclamation point and LS, which lists out the content. Let's do that now. And we have different file types. So we have a JSON file type, a few CSVs, and a readme. And if we drop down, take a look in this folder, we can see that's all listed here as well. And this is an example of a GUI interface because I'm clicking on the down arrow in the folder to get this, while I have a command line interface here to do the same thing. Next, we'll look at two different functions called head and tail that are very similar. Head by default prints out the first 10 lines of a file, while tail all prints out the last 10 files, 10 lines of a file. What we'll do is let's take a look at this California housing test CSV file. We'll initiate with the exclamation point, head, and print the first 10 lines. And we can see that we have the data listed here. In the header, we have longitude, latitude, housing median age, total rooms, total bedrooms, and this is all data for this California housing data set. One thing that we can do with the head command is we have some options. We can actually take a go back up and we can put in head under manual. And we'll scroll down a little bit to find different ways of utilizing this command. And what we could do is we have the option to edit the number of the lines that are printed using this dash n. Let's go back down. Let's say instead of having the default 10 lines printed, I want to just print out five lines. The way I'll do this is I'll put in dash n as we saw in the options and then I need to simply put in the number of lines that I want. In this case I just want five lines printed. Let's run this. Great. Now instead of having ten lines, which is the default, I'll have the first five lines printed. And we could do the same thing for tails. We just want to see the last five lines run this and we have the last five lines of the data set. Let's say that we want to make a copy of this data set and we want to do a few things before we do that. What we'll do is we'll take the copy and we'll put it into a new working directory or a new folder. And this is where we use the mkdir function or make directory. What we'll do is we'll call mkdir and we see that our folder is in the content and then we have the sample data. What we'll do is we have, we'll copy the first part content and we'll create a new folder called test. And if we hit shift enter and run this, this will create a new folder here. And if we refresh, we have a new empty folder that we created with mkdir. Next, what we could do is we want a copy of our data set. I'll copy this and I'll put in cp 
we're going to make a copy of the California housing test data. And we can actually get rid of this. This is the file I want to make a copy of. And I also need to give it the location where I want to put the copy in. And it's going to be in our new content test folder. Let's run this. Great, and we can refresh. And again, to contrast it, we can go into our new working directory and we could do CD and we can navigate to the content test folder and then we can list out the content. Great, so we were able to make a copy and put it into our test folder. And again, we can contrast the CLI option to the GUI option by just take a look, look here and we were able to create a copy. Awesome. Okay, then there are a few other functions I'll highlight. Remove deletes a given file. If we just want to get rid of it, we're done with it, or we copied the wrong file, it's very simple. We'll type in rm, then we'll type in the content test, and we'll do this for the California test data. Let's run this. And we can take a look that we were able to delete this. And now we just have this empty test folder. Finally, we can use the rmdir function or remove directory to just delete this folder altogether. I'll initiate with the exclamation point again. Then what I'll do is just I'll copy this path, put it in here and run this. And we were able to delete the folder completely. As with anything, always be cautious when deleting something. Don't just run this because you won't get a any are you sure you want to delete this prompt? It will just delete it. Thank you for watching. I hope that this was helpful. Again, this was a very very brief introduction into actual applications that you may use when you're writing a Jupyter notebook for data science, and this saves some time navigating and copying data. Here are some additional references that I think are helpful. This Python data science handbook is one that I've used before. It's available for free, highly recommend using it. And there are a few different websites that you can check out and there's a lot of content on shell scripting and specifically for Bash, which is one of the most popular, if not the most popular command language out there. If you liked it, feel free to subscribe. You can also connect with me on LinkedIn, Twitter, and GitHub. Thank you for watching everyone and happy coding.